Greetings, everyone. Welcome to the Last Harvest podcast, episode five, with your host, Damien Dumar. I am the publisher of the book by Lucy and Mars, entitled The Last Harvest, which is available on Amazon at the link below. The Last Harvest deals with the reality that the world's elite, under the influence of the Nebu Gray extraterrestrials, plan to eliminate 90% of the world's population in a campaign of global genocide commencing in 2025. Doesn't mean in 2025 everyone will be dead, but by 2025 you will start to see events unfold that lead to the extinction of most of humanity and the enslavement of the rest. The purpose of this podcast is to chronicle events that we see in the news that back up everything that is written in The Last Harvest. On that note, let's take a look at some of the things that were on the internet this week. Over here we see Putin's new military decree preparation for large-scale war with NATO. Now, who thinks this? Well, well, Russian President Vladimir Putin's new military decrees reestablish the Moscow and Leningrad military districts, which indicate he is preparing for a potential large-scale war with NATO in the future, a U.S.-based think tank has said. So again, this isn't my words. This is not the words of Lucy and Mars. This is the words of a notable U.S.-based think tank. So if we go a little further down here, we see that the recreation of the Moscow Military District and Leningrad Military District supports the parallel objectives of consolidating control over Russian operations in Ukraine in the short to medium term and preparing for a potential future large-scale conventional war against NATO in the long term, the think tank assessed. Now, Russian military analyst Yuri Fedorov previously told Russian investigative site Agentstvo that the recreation of, Le of the Leningrad military district suggests that Russia is gearing up for potential conflicts with the Baltic states and NATO. Now, the Leningrad military district, stationed close to new NATO member Finland and the Baltic states, is a key component of the Russian armed forces that oversees parts of the nation's defense strategy in Russia's western region. And we should note here that Finland shares an 800-mile border with Russia. Now, if you're a regular listener of this podcast, you will know that in the past we mentioned how Finland is suddenly very interested in learning to shoot guns and going to the range, and there's a lot of uh, preparation in that country. You'd say, for what? Well, here's your answer. Again, these are experts in military affairs, not me, nor the author Lucian Mars, and they're saying that, in fact, it shows that Putin is gearing up for large-scale warfare. But of course, they're talking about a conventional war here. Let's take a look at the idea of nuclear war. So here we have another article. Putin just made one of his most explicit threats of nuclear war yet. And it came after France's president suggested that NATO troops could be stationed in the Ukraine, which we'll get to in a moment. So the Russian president, Putin, said that the West was risking, quote, the destruction of civilization, end quote. And then he says, quote, Western nations must realize that we also have weapons that can hit targets on their territory. All this really threatens a conflict with the use of nuclear weapons and the destruction of civilization. Don't they get that? End quote, said Putin, according to Reuters. Well, what's interesting is Putin says, don't they get that? But doesn't he get it? He is the one who is threatening to use nuclear weapons. No one else is threatening to use nuclear weapons on him. It's true that there are implied threats from the U.S. and France and other NATO members talking about a conventional ground war, but no one is threatening him with nuclear weapons. So doesn't he get it? Doesn't he get that he is the one who would be ultimately responsible for the tragic consequences and the mass murder and genocide that would occur should he launch a nuclear attack? Is he not capable of fighting a conventional war? It's funny because they keep throwing blame onto other people when in fact 
it's they themselves who are responsible for these things. They act like they're being forced into doing it. No, it's their own free will choice. Someone once said to me, a series of completely unfortunate events are always completed, com preceded by a series of completely unnecessary events. Well, you have to ask yourself, is any of this necessary? Well, it's necessary if you are of the Nebu Gray and you're influencing the world leaders to do these sorts of things and using the elite to carry out your program of genocide, as is very clearly explained in great detail in the last harvest. And when we talk about the influence of extraterrestrials, here's an interesting article that came up about how a mystery disc-shaped UFO spotted by recon drone in the Ukraine. And here we have a video that's available on Twitter uh, of Ukrainian soldiers filming an un unidentified disc-shaped object in the combat zone. Let's take a look at it. Не, в сон не могут пустить по нам. Ты что? Охренеть, ни хрена. Что это за херня такая? Это ты лятарил как-то ну, блядь. По-любому. А ну приплеси еще. На месте ну, стоит, ты бачишь? А на месте, блядь, ну. А в теплок ну, ничего не сидит? Ха-ха, что ну, такое? Now that, if you watch the video, I don't know how well you can see it on my screen, but you can easily find it on Twitter, is clearly a UFO. It's an extraterrestrial craft. Now, whether it's actually being flown by extraterrestrials or it's reverse engineered, we don't know. But is it any shock that the Nebu Gray would show up in a war zone, considering that they're the ones influencing Vladimir Putin and all of the world's leaders to go to war? And for those of you who don't believe it's possible to influence the leaders of the world so easily, read The Last Harvest by Lucy and Mars. It's an audio book if you don't like to read. If you don't want to spend the full amount of money for the hard copy, you can get the digital copy for a fraction of the price. You owe it to yourself, I think, to learn about these things. Let's take a look at some other stuff here. Okay, here it is, another world leader being influenced to do dumb things that are not in your best interest. So NATO ally tells the Ukraine to cross Putin's red line. And here we have um, a situation where NATO is urging the Ukrainians to use weapons and to supply them with weapons that would basically strike Russia inside its own territory. Now, if there was an action that's going to bring about, at the minimum, a full-scale ground war, that would probably be it. It's one thing to repel invaders from your country, another to start going into the invading country and attacking it directly. Not that any of this war is a good idea. It says in the Bible, thou shalt not kill. It's one of the areas of the Bible that Satan could not corrupt. It's kind of hard to corrupt that. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. You can't really twist it or spin it around too much. Um, although human beings definitely love to try that, but it's their, to their own detriment. Back to the nuclear scene, here we have something. Cooperation among North Korea, Russia, China, and Iran raises possibility of simultaneous conflicts with nuclear armed adversaries, says a U.S. general. General Anthony Cotton commander of U.S. Strategic Command, made the remarks during a session of the Senate Armed Services Committee, stressing his command will always be ready to fight tonight. We are confronting not one, but two nuclear peers, the Russian Federation and the People's Republic of China. This reality, combined by missile developments in North Korea, Iran's nuclear ambitions, and the growing relationships amongst those nations, adds new layers of complexity to our strategic calculus. Again, this is a general of the U.S. Strategic Command stating this. And it goes to show you they see what's going on. There's potential for wide-scale nuclear conflict. And the Greys would love it because it's one of the fastest vectors of depopulation, especially when you realize how powerful these warheads are today. And again, when we look at world leaders, none of which were put in by the Almighty Father, but all of which were put into power by Satan. We have to say, like in the case of North Korea, how ridiculous is it 
that your entire country starves and has nothing to eat, but you're building nuclear weapons. Does that make sense to you? Why? <laughs> what does a small country like that need nuclear weapons for? No one really knows. Is it they want to show off? It's like someone living in the housing project driving a rented Lamborghini. I don't understand it. Well, it makes sense if you realize that the Greys are behind these world leaders, influencing them to do, to do these things because they can use them later in a global conflict. We're going to get down to something very interesting in this podcast today. But let's take a look at Senator Katie Britt. If you want to see a woman that's possessed, specifically she's being influenced by the dark goddess Eris, in this case, who punishes hypocrites, oath breakers, and Christians who violate the Father's commandment of thou shalt not kill, as we will see in the next video. But listen to her. Crossed just one generation in just one lifetime. It's truly breathtaking. But right now, the American dream has turned into a nightmare for so many families. The true unvarnished state of our union begins and ends with this. Our families are hurting. Our country can do better. And you don't have to look any further than the crisis at our southern border to see it. President Biden inherited the most secure border. Well, that's enough of her embarrassing herself. But we have here the hands of the dark goddess Eris around her throat. And uh, it's kind of creepy. Now, why is this the case? Well, let's look at something else here. Alabama Senator Katie Boyd Britt on opposing the ceasefire. We have to eradicate Hamas. And she wrote a book here called God Calls Us to Do Hard Things. Well, I'm pretty sure the Divine Father is not calling you to commit genocide or to go to war because that would be a violation of thou shalt not kill, which I already explained is pretty hard to mess up unless you're a Christian oath breaker like Katie Boyd Britt. And I guess you even can mess that up. Let's take a listen to how much this woman just loves to kill in the name of Jesus, of course. Us to do hard things, lessons from the Alabama wiregrass. And Senator Britt joins us now. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, I will yeah. say two things off the top. The, the wiregrass is the nickname for where you're from in yes, Alabama. That's right, yeah. that's right. Uh, two, you've been in the Senate for 10 months, but this, this book is not about your great vision. It's actually how you got to where you are and found your purpose. So I, I wanna begin with a couple questions on what you're doing with that purpose right now. You, yeah. you, you do not shy away from going to points of crisis. You've been to the border three times and you're on this recent trip to Israel. Mm -hmm. Where are you on this? question right now of a humanitarian pause or even a ceasefire? Do you support one? Look, n no, when you look at what happened in Israel. So when I went the first time to Israel, it was end of February. Then went again to your point about two weeks ago with a bipartisan delegation. What we saw on the ground was gut-wrenching. We first met with the families of hostages. Their stories will rip your heart out. You knowing that we have over 240 hostages in Gaza, um, you know, we have to think about their stories. When I listened to those, I listened as a mom and as a daughter and a granddaughter and a sister and a wife. And then when we met with obviously there, the government there in Israel, we got to see firsthand the accounts that occurred because these terrorists, these barbaric terrorists wore GoPro cameras on their head. Mm -hmm. So unlike- They wanted us to see They it. wanted us yeah. to see it. And when you see them step on someone's head to cut it off, when you see them murder children in front of their parents, when you see them burn parents alive in front of their kids, you realize this is evil. Yeah. And we as Americans, I feel like time and time again, when we see evil, we look it in the eyes and we take it down. Just a few days ago, Hamas came back out and said that- Well, the problem here is that uh, it's not your job to get rid of evil. It is the job of the greater evil that is in alignment with the will of the Divine Father to get rid of evil. It's not your job. That's why it says, thou shalt not kill. So, 
okay, so let's say Hamas is killing children in Israel. So the solution to that is to what? Go kill children in Gaza? Carpet bomb the place? Commit genocide? Hamas already probably escaped to Iran, went through some underground tunnels or something. So what exactly are you accomplishing here? This is very problematic and it is certainly not the job of human beings to eradicate evil. Like I said, it goes against the uh, commandment of thou shalt not kill. But these Christians are so eager to violate the commandments of the Divine Father and you think there's going to be no consequences for this? Of course there'll be consequences. I mean, when you look at a woman like this and listen to her talk, she sounds insane. And just based on what's in the Bible, yeah, she's pretty insane. I mean, you have to be insane to go against the commandments of the Divine Father and think there'll be no consequences for it. But in her case, she actually is so deluded as to think she's doing the right thing. And here we have a, a post on Twitter. And we have this other guy here. His name is Amir Whiteman, a powerful member of Netanyahu's party in Israel, went live on Russia Today and basically said that uh, they're going to make Russia pay for supporting Hamas. So it was sort of a uh, soft war declaration on Russia. Again, where is this all going to lead? It looks to me like it's going to lead to World War III. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. You know who else thinks that? Jordan Peterson. And Jordan Peterson, although I don't know about his views on religion, he actually says a lot in the next video about what the message of Jesus really was. And it wasn't go eradicate evil, go to war, violate the Father's commandments, uh, his message wasn't, hey, uh, all you have to do is get right with me and you can sin all you want or all your sins will just be forgiven. And by forgiven, basically, you won't have to deal with the consequences of your actions. No, let's take a look at what he had to say because he actually says it really good. Where does this go? Look, I did a little Jordan Peterson move right there, which is a good segue because we got a little Jordan Peterson. Right. Where does this all go? You've got Canada has declined economically. You guys are now making 60% of what Americans are making. China God, is- we can do worse than that. With oh, Jesus, work. let's hope not. Uh, China is watching everything everybody does. They're way beyond 1984. Mm -hmm. 2024 in the US is, uh, it's terrifying. The election, does it actually build up to civil war? I don't know. Yep, UK, yeah. you've got conflict, Russia, Ukraine, you've got conflict, Israel, you uh, the farmers Gaza. Revolt in Europe. Yeah, like mm -hmm. where does this go? Uh, it depends on how many of us shoulder our crosses and walk uphill. I, I really mean that. Like, we're at that point. Wake up, figure out which side you're on. If you were a betting man, mm -hmm. what odds do you give um, U.S. Civil War? What odds? Just pause it for a moment. That is also the message of the last harvest. Figure out what side you're on. You're going to be on the side of the Father. Or you're going to be against him. If you support war anywhere, you're against him. You're on the side of Satan, the Greys, Iblis, all those who are opposed to the Divine Father, you're picking a side with them during what is basically Armageddon as described in the book of Revelation. Jordan Peterson is not wrong. And when he says what the future depends on how many of us pick up our crosses and go up that hill, he's not talking about becoming a Christian. He's talking about the idea of personal responsibility. What really was the message of Jesus? To love thy neighbor as thyself, to help each other out, to try to be the best examples you could be of goodness. Kind of like the Amish people, right? They're all pacifists. None of them will go to war. Look how they live. They're all helping each other out. Let's take a little more at what, like more of a listen at what Jordan Peterson has to say. Odds do you give World War Three? Well, we, huh. we're already in World War Three. So I'd give that 100%. How far will it go? Depends on how stiff-necked we are, right? So the Egyptian tyrant is visited by, is it 10 plagues? 
The last plague is the destruction of the future itself. And what does it mean to learn? Well, this is why I'm a psychologist, not a politician. Or a theologian, to whatever degree I lay pretensions to that. Someone concerned with spiritual matters, let's say. Psychological matters. Redemption is a matter of individual determination. So that's why I operate at the big level of the individual. How far will we have to go? Notice, he says, redemption is a matter of individual determination. It has nothing to do with being saved or finding savior in some sort of religion. It has to do with you, your relationship with the Divine Father. That's what it's about. It's what all these crazy Christians like uh, the senator from Alabama don't seem to understand. It's what all the Project 2025, the idea of circumventing the Constitution and producing a Christian theocracy in the United States under the guise of a democracy. This is completely going in the direction of Satan. It's not going in the direction of the Divine Father. So, oh, depends on how many sins you decide to continue harboring. How are you connected? How is that decision connected to the destiny of the world? We all bear the world on our shoulders. How, how can that be true? Here's one way of thinking about it. How much better would the people around you be if you were better? Some, obviously. What's the ultimate extent of that? What if you were everything you could be? That's what you're called upon to be. You're called upon to be everything you can be. Why? Not least because the <laughs> try getting through the world without doing it. There you go. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Another aspect of the Bible Satan really couldn't corrupt. It's kind of difficult. So you can see every week as you watch this podcast the direction in which things are going. I'm launching exciting videos. Uh, on my YouTube channel, The Last Harvest, all the time besides this weekly podcast. And I encourage you all to watch them, to go to thelastharvest.info and register onto the mailing list. Subscribe in order to be eligible for a free monthly book drawing. We never know when YouTube will shut us down. There's always Rumble. We're on Rumble as well. Brighty on uh, TikTok. But it's always good to have a place of your own. So the last harvest.info, there are lots of podcasts there, more articles, all kinds of information. And you're always welcome to email me at uh, Damien Dumar at proton.me. And I'm willing to go on other people's podcasts and do interviews. Not a problem. So until next week, stay tuned.